Good morning, Dean. Uh, my name is Carl Daniel Argano, and this is my presentation about the IT integration in my organization. So, of course, we cannot deny the fact no, that um, IT or information technology has really become popular when it comes to um, office works, uh, computer, uh, computer works, and so on. And also, um, it actually became uh, easier for people to uh, maneuver tasks because of its power not to facilitate uh, works and functions. Now, for this uh, presentation, I'm going to discuss my, uh, my insights or my observations now based from what I've experienced with the IT integration in my organization. And here are the following importance of information technology in my academic organization. Because presently, I am a uh, college instructor at, my, at a local college here in my province. And I've been teaching here for, uh, for almost two years already. Now, these are the following things that I could tell na important na mga uh, advantages no, or info, uh, advantages of using IT in my organization. Now, these are first, we have the automated systems. Second, we have the multimedia approach to education. Third, the advantages no, in distance learning. Now, let's dig deeper on each of them. The first one is the automated systems. There. So automated education may provide a number of benefits, no? but also raises a number of concerns. However, uh, sabi nga mga experts, though uh, it's really nice to integrate IT sa education, but for some, uh, for example, educators, especially those that are very adamant now when it comes to technology, are having difficulty you know, in uh, operating uh, IT na mga devices. However, those are just challenges. No? In order to properly implement it, these benefits and trade-offs need to be weighed or need to be addressed uh, pa din. Because of course, um, there's still need of education when it comes to the usage. No? of the information technolo uh, technological na mga devices. Now, when speaking about education, there are electronic calculators, computers, slide projectors, smart boards, and other amazing inventions that were there even a couple of decades ago. So, of course, we noticed the transitions no? when it comes to uh, education tools. For example, during my time in high school, we only used Manila papers, no? yung mga traditional na mga media outputs. But today, because of uh, the advent of technology, educators could now uh, use um, IT devices like a PowerPoint presentation, you know, a television for uh, film viewing, uh, camera devices for, uh, for, uh, for outputs, video outputs, and so on. These often take time to adopt, with earlier adopters gaining an advantage over the others. So, of course, we could not really uh, deny the fact that uh, schools with uh, advanced na mga technological apparatus or devices na ginagamit when it comes to pedagogy, it's really better, no way better than those schools na gumagamit pa din ng mga traditional devices up to this day. The next one, for academic administrations. No? Academic administrators often find themselves overwhelmed with repetitive, time-consuming tasks, managing class schedules, keeping track of student attendance, processing grades, admitting new students. All these processes are as dull as they are valuable. So, of course, sa ating mga administrators, like yung mga staff, no? yung mga teaching staff ng school, um, it would really be boring no, if, it, if it's uh, every day na pagpaulit-ulit yung, yung tasks. No? So, dyan papasok kayo ng automated systems no? to facilitate their uh, simple tasks and also to, to function better no, on the other areas of their responsibility. 
Now, by deploying automation and software within the school's academic administration, much of the manual paperwork routines can be completely eliminated. Now, for example, uh, presently we're having an enrollment, no, under enrollment season sa aming school. So, automated na mga software or systems are actually helpful, especially in uh, reducing the time consumption when it comes to uh, encoding, enlisting, ano pa ba? Uh, enrolling subjects because we already employ uh, information technology, uh, technology na mga uh, devices. As a result, they'll be able to focus more on what matters in education to develop closer, meaningful relationships with teachers, students, and parents, no? and so on. The next one is the multimedia approach to education. Audiovisual education planning, preparation, and use of devices and materials that involve sight, sound, or both for educational purposes. So, of course, we could also not deny the fact that um, students become more enticed or attracted no? if the teacher would employ several media works or media outputs when it comes to teaching, no? especially in a lecture. Among the devices used are still and motion pictures. No? Uh, most students are more keen to listening if they are attracted visually no? when it comes to the learning experience. We also have film strips, television, audio tapes, records, and other devices na pwede niya apply when it comes to lectures, demonstrations, and teaching no, in general. The last one is the distance learning. Of course, because uh, we're facing pandemic, no, COVID-19, so it's also um, very effective for the IT integration nowadays na ma-facilitate no, yung education when it comes to uh, learning. No? Kasi nga, transition tayo from classroom education to distance learning or the modular system. Distance learning method of the uh, distance learning is a method of learning at a distance rather than in a classroom, like the use of Google Classroom, virtual meetings, ano pa ba? Uh, so even social media is also being used, no, uh, in this time. Late 20th century communications technologies in their most recent phases, multimedia and interactive open up new possibilities, both individual and institutional for an unprecedented expansion of home-based learning, much of it part-time. So aside from having a full-blown no, online education, kasi nga available na siya, no, for some schools, no, uh, students now can actually develop their uh, independent learning no, because of distance learning, wherein students no, become more studious because uh, there's a distance gap no, between the teacher and the students uh, so they're more able to uh, to teach themselves no or to have a learning experience by themselves because of distance learning and also of course with the assistance of the in, uh, information technology so that is why uh, it's also nice that uh, in senior high school there's already ICT and MIL now being taught sa ating mga students so that no, they could actually um, uh, ano ba? they could actually do it on their own no? they have the education to maneuver mga uh, technological devices especially those devices that could help them enrich no, their learning, their knowledge and so on the term distance learning was coined within the context of a continuing communications revolution, largely replacing a hitherto confusing mixed nomenclature. Home study, independent study, external study, and most common, though restricted in pedagogic means, correspondent study. So, and dami mga discover na mga students na when it comes to distance learning by the use, of course, of the IT integration in education. The convergence of increased demands for access to educational facilities and innovative communications technologies has been increasingly exploited in face of criticisms. The distance learning is an adequate substitute for learning alongside others in formal institutions. No? 
meron na, uh, actually, uh, I think that was just last year when I learned that UP is actually offering a full-blown online education. No? It's called UPOU. And yeah, ang dami na mga, uh, uh, mga ano ba, graduate students no? na nag-aaral doon. It's a powerful incentive has been reduced cost per student. At the same time, students studying at home themselves save on travel, time, and other costs. So of course, let's face it, no? medyo magastos talaga when you go to school no? compared to the distance learning.